Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to my Philadelphia Eagles offense ebook or full video, depending on whether you're watching this on uh, my YouTube channel or you purchase this off my website. Either way, thank you for your purchase. Uh, this particular playbook I chose to do because to me it's the best um, you know, running playbook. It has some of the best run plays in the game. It might be missing maybe one or two out of the top 10 runs, in my opinion, in the game. Other than that, it's just phenomenal. Um, so other than that, I'll explain. First, I'd like to explain how I typically do this type of video. Um, because these are so lengthy, I typically try to uh, keep the times that I run it at a minimum. I just try to give the most information possible, but still have the video uh, somewhat you know, quick as possible because I know you don't want to spend an hour, two hours watching a video. Um, so, I mean, I base that off of my previous videos that I've done. Uh, the, the watch time for my hour long, two hour long videos were like 10% uh, to, to 15%. So obviously people don't want to stick around watching that. So I'm going to try to do them as quick as possible with as much information as possible. I won't run the play unless I want you to see something after the play has started. Uh, other than that, if you want to click the first link, we'll get started. First up out of the single back wing tight, we have the... Uh, PAFL stretch. Now this player right here, you can run it a couple different ways. If you motion out the circle route, um, he's a pretty good cover three beater, uh, man beater, not a cover two beater. And this looks like a cover two, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, it's a really good bench switch concept as is. Uh, you can also motion over um, the circle route or the X route really, and then put him on a slant and it's a good high low concept uh, with Burton. Uh, other than that, um, the outside uh, receiver Jeffrey, he's not really doing too much. Um, it's really up to you. If, you. if you think it might be a cover three, putting him on an out route and then smart routing him would probably be the best way to go. Um, and I would say on well, this particular play, because I think it's a cover two, I would probably put the circle route on a slant. Um, you can also put Ertz on a drag coming open behind that um, because he's not going to do much or flat. He's not going to do much uh, in this direction. Um, so it's really a couple different ways you can do it. Now this looks like a man because this guy keeps following me uh, wherever I go. So let's go ahead and let's run just like this. Take away the play action. That would be one of my uh, better options. If you're going to motion this guy out like this, I would say the best way to do it is put Ertz on a slant. There's a couple different ways to do this. This is a very, uh, you know, a very, uh, how do you say it? A, a lot of different ways you can run this play, I guess, is the best way to go. So here we got the uh, X route. You see they, they're going to work off one another, these two tight ends. Yeah, this circle right here, it doesn't matter what kind of tight end it is. This looks like either a man or a cover three. It's exactly what I want. Uh, if I throw to him, I have to cancel the play action, by the way. Make sure you put the running back on the block. But if I throw to him when he makes his break, he'll be open pretty much every time. It's a glitch in the uh, computer system. You see how he just the cornerback just doesn't react. That's that simple. Next up by the single back wing type, we have the half back stretch. This player right here, you got a couple different options. You can motion over uh, Ertz or Selleck here. You just want to make sure that whatever you do, you have two tight ends and a receiver on one side. So whether you want to motion over uh, the, the second tight end or you want to motion over the receiver, uh, which basically, you know, you're still, the, the, the desired outcome is to always have the receiver with two tight ends on the same side. And that'll give you the blocking advantage to the edge that you want. Um, I'll go ahead and run this. I don't know if I really got a great running back, uh, but you know, you'll get better, better runs if you have a better back. Next up out of the single back wing tight Z, we have the, uh, the drive. This play, if it's a man coverage, you can leave it just like it is. If it's a zone coverage, uh, you want to motion out Selleck and he's going to give you a uh, really this looks like it's either a, uh, a a cover three or man but either way if you motion him out throw the ball right when he makes that split um, i don't care what type of tight end he is because Selleck's not a good tight end he's going to make that play every time he's going to get to the top notch corner and he's going to make that play now if it's a man coverage you can just run it just like this because um you're typically going to have he's going to be lined up right in front of him you can get that outside edge other than that you've got good check downs over the middle with your r1 route and uh your your square route so it's a really good play Next up, out of the wing tight Z, we have the halfback stretch. This play right here, you run it just like this. There's no motions or anything to give away the play. Um, you just typically have uh, the exact type of blocking setup that you want to have. Um, so nothing really to this play. I just wanted to highlight it to make you aware uh, of its capabilities. Next up, out of the single back wing tight Z, you have the PA sprint halfback flat. This play, you run it just like this. Uh, I find it's pretty good. Or you can put your uh, burn here either on a slant or on a drag. I think it's a pretty good way to go. Um, I would I would actually rather go with the X route uh, on a drag because he's at the line of scrimmage. The R1 route's kind of behind, so he can run in alignment. But I don't think Ertz is as good a receiver as Burton. So in all reality, I would say it would be it would make more sense to put 
uh, your best receiving tight end in Ertz's position. Oh, I'm sorry, Ertz is good. I was thinking he was Selleck. Either way, uh, yeah, he'd be better at the drag. Um, you also have the option, if you want to, to put uh, Burton on a streak. This would only be good in a cover three scenario or a cover two. A lot of people are running these Tampa twos, um, and I find that this streak really goes good up to Tampa two. If you're going to throw it to the R1 route, you want to cancel that play action right away uh, because this uh, that, that a long play action. The running back and the tight end come across are the best options. Um, but if you if you see a hole uh, right up the center here, and you can leave Ertz, you have your your choice of combination. You can have Ertz on a drag, you can have him on a slant, or you can just leave him the block. Like this here looks like um, it's going to be uh, a blitz because that way that guy's down. So what I want to do is I'm going to cancel the play action right away, and I'm just going to throw it uh, to Ertz, which it was. It was an all-out blitz cover three, which is kind of what I was expecting, um, and that's a really good way to do it. Canceling the play action, if you don't know, is hitting R2 the second that the ball is snapped. Uh, that was not the best read, but I uh, wasn't really paying attention. By the way, he, got, he caught the ball, uh, but you got really good options all around here. The only one I'm not really going to throw to is Jeffrey. Jeffrey's not horrible, uh, but I just don't find out of all the reads that he's really going to be the best one as I make a mistake there. Jeffrey might have been the read there. I was kind of I was trying to force him to look his way, but he's definitely a good option. So a couple different ways to run this play. Next up, we got the PA Power O. No adjustments here. I just wanted to highlight it once again. Uh, you can put your uh, square route on an in route and then smart route it. It's a good uh, check down or just a regular in route. It's really up to you. Uh, but that's just a good option if your outside options are covered for whatever reason. Um, your square route is a good check down. Uh, although your user middle linebacker might be in that area. Um, but your outside routes, which is R1 and the X route, are typically going to get open. Uh, X against man, R1 against cover two. Um, there it's just an all out blitz, so pretty much everybody's going to be open. And that's the play. Next up, we got the uh, counter U. This here, it's going to have that same motion as the power O. I just find it's more successful play. Um, and then you can see how uh, there's just a, a nice alley uh, to run through there. Uh, plays off of the PA power O play that I did in a previous link. Next up, out of the single back wing pair, we have the PA Experts Cross. This play here, all you really want to do is you want to put your R1 route on a drag and then put your circle route on a streak. He's good against, the circle route's good against cover threes, uh, but really you're playing a flood concept to the outside. The running back is going to be the best option. Um, there he actually chose the running back, which is typical. They'll typically uh, zone cover the, uh, the, um, the drag route. I actually just messed up. The drag route here um, is typically going to be the, uh, the coverage for the linebacker, and then the running back will typically be open in the flat. But I guess there's a couple different ways to go. But either way, you have three levels of passing. That's the point. There I take the deep option. Um, and then, like I said, the circle route. Uh, I'm not seeing any cover three options here, but the circle route is going to be really good um, if you have a cover three. And we're just going to go up top again. Next up out of the single back wing pair, we have the 24 zone open. This play here I find is best to flip it back the other way, motion over your your widest tight end. Um, I try to motion snap him uh, to get him wide a little bit on, on my blocking system, um, but basically you can see how it just creates a really nice lane. Anytime you have a diagram that shows your receiver um, coming on the inside the block, it's just a much better running play i don't know why but it's in the it's in the uh the diagram of this play jeffrey kind of comes in um it just creates a much better uh opening here um and there my my dude went wherever he wanted to go but either way very good play next up by the single back wing pair we got the pa counter shot this play is pretty good just like it is the only adjustment to make is motion in jeffrey now what jeffrey's going to do now is be open right up the seam whether it's cover two or cover three he's typically going to be open right up the seam there uh burns good against cover three and uh your 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 tight ends Ertz and Selig are really good i'm going to cancel this play action by hitting r2 uh nine times out of ten here i'm going to take the check down to r1 uh looks like it was a cover four if you think that it's going to be uh a quick throw to jeffrey in the seam you could always put your running back on a pass block um, and then you can just quick throw it. I typically pass lead inside, but you can see he gets past the linebacker. He didn't hang on to it. Next up by the single back ace, we have the skinny post. All I'm really going to do is put my X route on a slant, and that's going to basically work to get every other receiver open. Um, the circle route will pull wing though for that. That was a cover four, and it still worked out. Yeah, I don't want the running back on a pass block or a, a check and release either. Put him on a pass block. Um, but basically, Ertz is going to either get open himself like he did here, or he's going to work to create throwing lanes for everybody else. Um, he's going to, and you can do the same thing with Selleck if you want to. I find that it doesn't quite work out the same. Um, I find that if you look at the outside routes, they're slightly different. I find it works better by putting Ertz, um, Ertz the, into the slant. I think that's a better way to go. Uh, but basically, he could also pull coverage for the square route. Um, but you see, this just, it just creates lanes. Next up, out of the single back A slot, we have the, uh, where are we at here? The uh, PA Scissors Flood. 
Yeah, this play here, all you really want to do is you want to put Ertz on a drag, and then you want to motion over Jeffrey. But it looks like a cover three. Um, you could always put Jeffrey on an out route and then smart route him, and he's a good cover three play. Uh, but the circle route's pretty good up a cover three scene too. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hike this. We're going to cancel the play action. And you basically have a flood concept to the outside. Whether it's a, it's a cover two, if they cover low, you see the tight ends open. If they cover back, you'll leave the running back open. Um, and then if you hit the running back, Ertz typically turns into a blocker, which is nice. Uh, motioning this guy over too will give away the coverage. So now I know that it's a man coverage. Um, I can make my adjustment. Uh, man coverage, the back is typically not the way to go in the man coverage. Typically the way to go in the man coverage is, is uh, Selleck once again, who's not a very good tight end, but he still gets a big play in the score. So like I said, once you make, once you create this play, uh, Smith is your cover three beater. Jeffrey, you can make a cover three beater by putting him on, this looks like, I'm not sure, this looks like a cover four, but you can make him a cover three beater on the other side by putting him in one of these. Uh, and then your cover two concept is Selleck and Blunt and your man concept is Selleck. Next up by the single back A slot, we get the halfback counter. Yeah, this player right here, if you want to, you can motion in Jeffrey here and try to seal that edge with him. Um, a lot, it'll, it'll mirror the motion Oh wow, I totally ran my blocker. It'll mirror the motion that I did in a previous play. I don't find that Jeffrey necessarily, you have to take him very far. You can you can pretty much motion snap him from right there. Um, and he'll get to the next level and give you a block uh, down on his corner a little bit better. Um, so it's really up to you. You can try to guide him where you want. But if you motion snap him right away, he definitely gets that inside edge. Uh, and does a better job of protecting you on the inside running lane, which is what you want. Next up out of the single back ace slot, we have the double post. This player right here, you want to put your circle route on either a drag. Uh, slanting doesn't really work. It's too close. So the drag's either the way to go or an in route's the way to go. Um, and this is another concept where we'll kind of create uh, throwing lanes for either Selick or Jeffrey. You could also put uh, Ertz here on a drag on the other way. You got a double drag concept or you can put them on a slant. It's really up to you. So you have really a lot of guys pulling across one another. Uh, to create lanes. You see how the middle linebacker there took the X route and followed it out of the way of my throwing lane. And that's basically what it is. So I really would say that this is the best way to go. And you're just basically watching which, which players the linebackers uh, gravitate to. That was an all out blitz. So that's why that worked out as good as it did. Oh, Selig's having a good day today right now. Um, but other than that, you're just basically, um, I couldn't tell you a necessarily read structure, but like I said, you're just kind of watching, lab this a little bit, watch who's following what and where, and you're going to know um, who's open. It's that simple. But you're really going front to back. You're really going from uh, Smith to Ertz to Selleck to Jeffrey, uh, from the closest one to you to the furthest one to you is, is really the repercussion. Next up by the single back deuce close, we have the uh, PA cross. This play here, all you want to do is you want to put Ertz on a drag, and now you have a really good um, concept. Your cover three concept is Sal, or is, uh, Jeffrey. He's going to be open right away, right off the middle of the cover three. Um, other than that, your cover two concept is the R1 route. Here, we're going to go ahead. We're going to hit Smith. Um, had to come back to the ball a little bit there as you got your flood concept again. Like I said, if you got a cover three, it's going to be uh, Jeffrey right away. Um, you want to keep your, your other tight end blocking. Uh, because you're going to need it. So here you can see we floated out to the running back. He gets a nice big catch and run play. So real simple. Like I said, your cover two concept is your high and low with Blunt, Ertz, and Smith. Your cover three is Jeffrey. Next up by the single back, Deuce Close, we have the uh, tight end angle. This play, once again, if you got like a cover three or a man coverage motioning out Jeffrey and throwing it to him, uh, when he makes his break, this looks like a cover two, it's not going to work. But if you throw it against a cover three or a man, once he makes his break, it'll be open pretty much every time. Uh, cover three, Brent Selleck will be open right up the seam. Uh, against a lot of cover two, like the Tampa two, Brent Selleck will be open as well. Um, I think pass blocking blunt is probably the best way to go, so I have time to make my read. If it's a cover two, you can also put Selleck either on a flat route or an out route, and you have uh, a high-low concept. Uh, we'll go ahead and run it like this. This looks like a cover, uh, cover three. He's not too, or cover two. He's not very fast, so he's not going to get the best catch and run. He's doing pretty good though for as slow as he is. I would like to get like a cover three concept to show you the the, the timing that is required in Jeffrey. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll try that. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm just going to throw it right when he makes that break. And you can see that was a man coverage, so you can see how he beats it. Next up, as a single back deuce close, we have the PA misdirection. Now, once again, Jeffrey, uh, if it's a cover two or a cover three, oh, I'm sorry, if it's a cover three or a man, you can run it like this. And if you throw it right when he makes that break, you got to cancel the play action because I forgot to. He, he wasn't the read anyway because it, was it wasn't a cover. It was a cover two, so it's not going to work. 
but if it's a cover three or a cover, this looks like a cover two or cover four, it's not gonna work once again. Uh, Selleck here, he's gonna check and release. I think once again, you can put him on a streak for cover three, it's pretty good. I like the motion over Ertz, and I think that Ertz in the backfield here um, just creates a really nice cover two concept uh, with, he's just so slow. I, he, I, don't know how he, <laughs> I don't know how he got open. I thought he was gonna get covered there. But you can see how even a man coverage or again in a cover two, uh, Ertz is going to be really good. And then Selleck is your cover three. This looks like he's going to be open. This looks like a cover two. And I think Selleck's going to be open. Anyway, he is so slow. And he still found a hole. <laughs> it's like a lineman running out there. So yeah, this is the best way to run it. Uh, cover two or cover three. Just run it just like this. And then motion over Ertz. And now you have your cover two concept and Jeffrey and Ertz. And Selleck and Smith are cover three beaters. Next up out of the single back deuce close, we have this, the counter weak. Uh, basically, I just want to motion over Ertz the same way I did in a previous play. Uh, just basically helps him get to where he's going a little bit faster. Helps to seal the edge and get you outside. I'm um, going to go back inside. If I had a little more speed, I probably could have made that go. Um, but that's really the only adjustment. And you can always flip the play if you want to go the other way. Uh, just by, you know, it doesn't change anything. Um, and then you can run it in, in the same capacity. Next up by the single back deuce cloaks, we have the halfback stretch. Nothing really special about this play other than the fact that you can flip it without actually changing it. Um, so no matter what your opponent is doing, if you think you see a hole on one side, um, you can just flip it and quick snap it and there's no reset of the formation. So uh, that's really handy, but it's really just an outside run. Next up out of the single back this close, we have the halfback wham. Another pro favorite, I, I'm told you want to run it uh, uh, towards the, you know, like right there, the, the uh, run it towards the hole essentially. Uh, where basically you can see how Ertz is, if, if you're, the defensive tackle is on the left side of the center, you want to run it like this. You want to run running back to the right side. If he's on the other side, um, you can flip it just by going like this. Here is not a good way to run it because he's right in that gap. He's not going to pull him out. Uh, as you can see, it's not as big of a hole. So just make sure you're running it towards the hole, which is, sounds simple enough. Uh, shouldn't need too much explanation. Here's another one. Um, so he's going to basically create that gap. Um, and it's really that simple. If it's a cover three, or I'm sorry, if it's a three-man front, uh, like a 3-4, um, like this year. I want to flip it, and I want to run it to that hole. It's that simple. If it's a three-man front, and he's right over the center, uh, it's, uh, it stops it a little bit better than this. Next up, by the single back deuce wide flex, we have the uh, quick pitch. One of my more favorite plays. No, nothing to change here. I'm just highlighting it because it's a really good blocking play. Um, but basically, just uh, I wish that he would have got that block, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anyway. So we got a real slow run back here, busting huge runs. Like I said, no change to this play whatsoever. Um, it just sets up. The, it's just such a gorgeous blocking play. Uh, run it as is. And uh, you typically just take it as wide as possible. Make sure you have a speed back in, though. Next up, out of the single back deuce wide flex, we have the deep cross, PA deep cross. We got the same motion here uh, to an extent, so it kind of looks like the same play, but you're really playing high and low off of the, off of the uh, two receivers, the X and the circle route. No real adjustments here. Um, if you think it's a cover three, you can put Jeffrey on an out route and then smart route him, cancel the play action, um, and then he's going to be a little bit better than a streak, but other than that, there's no adjustments. Next up by the single back deuce wide flex, we have the, uh, where are we at here, the PA counter shot. Once again, no adjustments. This is going to play off of the run play that I showed earlier. To me, one of the best run plays in this game. Um, and then you're basically going to have uh, a high-low concept, which is uh, your X route and Jeffrey. I don't think the other route really does too much. Uh, but it's not a bad route. What Smith is doing is really like a cover two, a deep cover two beater, um, which hopefully I'll get here as he comes across the face of the defender. That was a man coverage. Gets a touchdown, too. We'll call it a touchdown. Let's move on. Next up by the single back, Deuce Wide Flex, we got the Curl U Hook. So this play here, all I'm really going to do is motion over Ertz so that he's in line with Selleck. And then I'm going to put Selleck on a slant. Uh, but Ertz, I'm not sure, is that Ertz? Yeah, Ertz here, he's a little bit faster than Selleck, so hopefully he'll get to that to that outside pretty quick. Uh, he'll do that fine against linebackers, but if it's like a, a dime package or something like that, or a nickel package, I wouldn't recommend it because unless you have a really fast tight end anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the look. I would also say you can put Smith here on a slant or a in route and then smart route him to work off of Selleck. But I would also have uh, Blunt here as a pass blocker. Um, as you can see here, this, this outside, running this route to the outside just really kind of is hard for anything to cover. Next up out of the single back wide deuce, or deuce wide flex, we have the 0-1 trap. Yeah, this play here, you typically want to flip it towards the hole once again. So um, hopefully this center is going to drive that DT and then my guard's going to come across and take that other DT out of the play, uh, which he does here. But you know what? That's Damon Harrison, so he shedded it. 
Uh, but still, this is the best way to run it. So once again, run it towards the hole, flip it. Now I'm going towards the hole. Uh, you know, that's Kelsey's not going to take on Damon Harrison. There's a huge strength disadvantage. Uh, but here, I'll flip it towards the hole again. Um, but, uh, you know, this is still the best way to run the play. And you can really make this a nice couple of yards every time you run it. Next up, at a single back wing, we have the, where are we at here? The halfback stretch. This play here, there's no real adjustments. I just wanted to highlight it. You can see how you got two tight ends to the one side, um, and that's a really good stretch blocking scheme. You can see how there's just a huge lane there. Stretch blocking just holds his blocks longer than typical blocking. Um, this here, the way that they're crashing down, I'd say flip it. Uh, you could always motion over Selleck or one of the receivers. It's really up to you. Uh, doing that, though, made him step back up off the line. But either way, you got to read your keys. Um, and then, you know, Blunt's not really the best guy <laughs> to run those type of uh, short yards plays. But uh, either way, the best way to run it is definitely uh, just as is. No adjustments. Um, ho hopefully the blocking holds up a little bit better. But this is a really good play. I run this quite a bit. Um, here, here, this definitely looks like the type of blocking that I want. Um, as you can see, we're just getting uh, right up that gap there. Just as long as that receiver holds that edge. Next up, out of the single back wing, we got the PA or the close PA cross. This play right here, all you really want to do is put your running back on a pass block and uh, put uh, Ertz, your X route, on a streak. So if it's a cover three, he's going to be open right up that cover three. Otherwise, he's just going to help to get these other guys open. Selk there makes a weird catch in animation, but typically that's a catch and run. Um, so we'll go ahead and run this. This is a cover three, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to throw it right away up this cover three seam here. Uh, pass lead inside a little bit and it's just a really simple play other than that you got your two guys going over the middle if it's a cover two Jeffrey is a pretty decent uh, deep route in a cover two scenario this looks like it's probably like a cover four or something like that um, it's like make a uh, I, I probably shouldn't have thrown that that was probably a tight window but he made it next up out of the single back wing we have the where are you at here the uh, PA counter this play here you just run it just like this it's a really good play I like the uh, what the tight ends doing so it's not very fast I wish he was a little bit faster. He would have more success in this play. Uh, but you're really playing him off of the X route. And the X route's going to be open more often than you think. I wish I would have put Trey Burton, my uh, speedy, my speedier receiving tight end, in uh, where Selleck is. Uh, but you can see he's pulling coverage down quite a bit. And both of those guys, are I got to throw either one. you got to keep an eye out for 17 as well. Um, that C route's really good. And then Smith is good against cover twos uh, deep. Next up out of the single back wing, we have to counter you. This plays off of uh, the other counter, pat the play action counter play I was telling you about. Um, but you just have a really good uh, running lane right there at the middle. Um, if you just got to really pay attention to defensive end. If your defensive end gets outside, you got to get up inside. If he doesn't get outside, then you can go to the outside yourself. Like here, uh, as I run into my blocker. And it still worked out. <laughs> I didn't read it too good, but it still worked out. Uh, once again, he's like outside like this, split outside like that. He's probably going to crash that edge. So I'll wait for him to get outside, let that blocker contain, and go ahead and get up. I probably could have got a few more if I went inside, but you can see how that works. Next up, I'm single back wing up the tight end attack. All you got to do is put Blunt here on, a, on an out route, any type of route, because I'm basically going to motion him to the line and then put him on a slant. Uh, and now you have your levels of passing over the middle. If it's a cover three, or if you're not really sure, you can put Jeffrey on an out route and a smart route him. You can also do the same thing with... Uh, with Smith, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter because those streaks aren't going to do much. Um, so then you can just basically run it just like this. And uh, you can see here, I had to pass lead up to get over that coverage. You didn't hang on to it, but uh, one of those will be open. The running back's typically going to be open the most uh, underneath what uh, the two tight ends are doing. If it's a cover three, I don't know why he's not motioning. If it's a cover three, um, Selleck is a good option as well. Um, so this looks doesn't look like a cover three, so we'll go ahead and rock it just like this. Um, as we see, the triangle route just kind of comes open underneath everything. Next up, out of the single back wing flex, we have the PAY cross. If it looks like a cover three, R1's a pretty good streak or fade option, but typically I want to put them in a drag. This looks like a cover two, so my options are really going to be uh, the triangle route first, uh, typically a nice catch and run. You basically go from front to back though. Um, your reads are going to be, you know, closest to you, the furthest away, and then the X route here. That's cover four in the X route. Um, just beating that. I also find it's best to sometimes motion over Smith so that you basically uh, see how the defender comes in. Now he's in a harder position to stop the running back. Um, so motioning that receiver over really kind of creates uh, something here. He actually took the running back out, but then you can see the tight ends there. So either way, motioning that receiver across gives away the coverage. 
uh, whether it's a man or zone. Uh, and it also, like I said, it opens that up. So if he follows, it's a man. If he if he um, closes in like he did here, it's a zone. And then, like I said, if it's a cover three, um, you know, Selk's a really good option. Uh, right up that cover three seam there as I pass lead away from the defender. And it's just a really good play all around. Next out of the single back wing flex, we're going to run the uh, halfback stretch. In a previous play, I motioned over Smith to get the running back open. Here, I'm going to do the same thing. But this time, it's just to basically block uh, outside. Um, in my uh, in my stretch run now. I got three blockers on the one side to hold the point of attack Although they didn't here in this play on a previous play uh, whether you watch the link or not I motioned the guy over um, to uh, Basically get my running back open more in the flats here It's basically to create more blocking and if it's a zone coverage It's a good way to go if it's a man coverage You don't want to do it because you bring a defender across but if it's a man coverage you want to run just like this but see how that cornerbacks playing off there I'm gonna go over and occupy him uh, pull him out away from the play and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hopefully my blocking sets up didn't really do a great job there stiff arm that guy a little bit uh, but still the best way to run it next up out of single back bunch we have the PA boot slide this plays good to run just like this um, you know you're gonna basically this looks like a man you're gonna basically have three different levels of passing as I throw it to Smith here <coughs> if you think it's a cover three motioning in Jeffrey's a good option this doesn't look like cover three. You can run it like this anyway. It doesn't really matter because uh, he's still pulling back coverage. Uh, the R1 right here is definitely your check down. He'll be open quite a bit. Uh, but you're really just reading front to back. Next up out of the single back bunch, we have the quick pitch. This here, I basically just like to start Smith in motion and then hike it right away. It just basically helps him get to that next level, a little speed boost. Had to take it inside there. Typically, I want to take it outside. If you want to take it outside, you could also just motion Smith out, let him get set. A lot of times he'll pull the cornerback out, um, and this is a good option too. Uh, but I find that it's better um, to do it the first way. As you can see, I didn't get too much there. Next up out of the single back bunch, we have the D spot. This play here, I just typically like to put your circle route on a slant. Uh, you have a high-low concept, um, and pass leading outside is definitely the way to go. Uh, as you see Aguilar with the big play there. You're basically just going to go Aguilar uh, or Smith nine times out of ten. That's pretty much how this play is. Your other side is pretty much an option route. Uh, but a lot of times if you don't make that read correctly, he'll do something you don't want him to do. Like here, I don't really want him to do that outside route. So I don't really find that he's too reliable. If anything, I'd say just put him on an in route and a smart route. I'm such you know what he's doing. Because uh, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I don't really find that uh, you always have it figured out the other way. But this is the route. It's all about Aguilar anyway. So just pass lead him to the outside every time you throw. Next up out of the single back bunch, we have the verticals. This play here, just put your running back into some sort of passing pattern, motion him out, and then put him on a slant. If it's a cover three, which this looks like, you can throw a quick strike to uh, to uh, Smith. Uh, just make sure you pass lead to the outside. He's going to be open underneath in a cover three. Um, but basically this play like this looks like a cover four or a cover two uh, You're gonna basically be playing the running back off of uh, Aguilar uh, Ertz is not too bad, but you're, you're this is a cover four definitely, but you're gonna have the middle of the field pretty much be your options You could also put at Jeffrey on one of these if it's a cover three So I would say your maximum look uh, for the most possible receiving options would be this uh, but typically everything's going to drop back the triangle route's going to be open underneath it Ertz is not too bad either I'll see if I get him open here pass lead him to the outside I'm not sure what that coverage was but he gets open quite a bit too keep an eye out for him everybody gets open here next up out of the single back wide trips we have the PA zone shot this is a cover four beater this play is a one play touchdown if you have a lot of room uh, against cover four um, it's real simple all you really have to do is uh, run out of the pocket so I'm going to go ahead and run it one time. Don't touch anything. You can run just like this. And it's a really good play. I just have to get outside of the pocket here. And when I step up and throw it and pass lead, uh, bullet pass outside, you can see how Jeffrey just gets behind the safety in the corner. Real simple. You might not always have the time in the pocket to, uh, to get it to Jeffrey. So putting this guy in a drag route, Smith in a drag route, gives you a good check down with the guy over the middle. Um, so we'll go ahead and we're going to come out of the pocket again here. He's stepping up. I'm stepping up. And we're going to catch it and run for another touchdown. But uh, you could have threw circle. You could have threw the other guy. Uh, it's, you have basically three options there. Um, and they're all pretty good um, if you run it just like this. Next up at the single back wide chips, we got the double post. This play right here, um, you can run it like this. I like to put Smith on a slant or an in route. Uh, Eric Problem right runs a play kind of like that, where he runs this play with an in route. Um, so that's really up to you. You can also put the running back uh, out 
into a flat concept so that you have a, a high low concept for your corner strike on the other side uh, but that's really up to you there's a couple different ways to run it this this r1 route though is the big play down the middle of the field the running back in a check and release really doesn't do much, but it's up to you. If you want to put him on a pass block and leave him in the backfield, um, it's not the worst way to go either. As you can see, we got Aguilar there. The uh, PA boot right tackle is next. Not a lot of adjustments. I find it's best to put Blunt out again and then put him on a drag. It plays off of the other play that I put out of this formation. Uh, but you basically have a couple different options. You can throw it to Aguilar early when he's crossing in or late when he's crossing outside. You can leave the, the running back in the pass block, and that's fine too. But putting him on a drag mirrors the other play. Um, and then you can see here, I mean, that guy's pulling back, and that just leaves Aguilar open underneath him. He gets open multiple times on the route. Next up out of the I-form wing, we have the halfback power O. All right, so this play right here, the best way that I like to run it is I typically like to just flip it and run it just like this. Um, a couple of plays I'm going to show you, I'm going to have Selleck motioning out so it's good to do that as a misdirection uh, but you're basically hoping that that defensive end gets outside and then you just basically take it up inside i, I didn't hit that hole it was there still got five yards but uh, but you want that defensive end outside if he's inside like this you can take it outside if you have some agility barely got that with blunt there um, but you're basically just reading that defensive end so if the defensive end gets wide and crashes down you got to go inside if he if he gets stuck inside you got to go outside simple play Next out of the I-form wing, we have the PA Power O. If it's a cover two look, which this looks like a cover three, so I'll give you the cover three set first. Uh, basically, just put Selleck on a streak, motion in Jeffrey. Looks like a blitz, so I, I can cancel the play action before the play or after it. Uh, really depends on what you want to do. And you can see here, I can just get a quick strike off up the seam to square or the circle route. If it's a cover two, same streak, just motion out Selleck. Now, Jeffrey's a good cover two beater over the middle, and you have your high, low, in uh, Ertz and Burton. Whoever they, you know, if they drop down or they don't drop down, you basically have one of the two guys. So, cover two, cover three, doesn't matter. Cover four, it'll still work as well. Next up, out of the single back I form wing, we have the Power G. Really good run play. You just want to motion out Selleck. You can motion snap him, where he's basically just snapping it right away. Um, it'll help him get set a little bit, uh, get a little one on one move there. This is a real uh, popular play in the community last year. Yeah, you can also just motion him out, let him get set, and a lot of times we'll pull the cornerback back off the line, um, but that's another good way to do it. But either way, uh, you're just basically getting out there. You see how the block led outside, and I have a really slow running back almost taken to the house. Next up by the eye form wing, we have the halfback toss. This play here, all you really want to do, one same thing, is you're just going to motion out Selleck. You can motion snap him once again, or you can let him get set. Really doesn't matter. This play here, you got multiple pulling guys. If you make your reads, which I almost did not, uh, you can see how you got a really big play there. Like I said, you can motion snap him, which is basically, I'll try to show you that one here in a second. Just in case you didn't see any of the other links, you basically just, as soon as he st stands up, uh, just hit him out. He basically comes back as like a crack back block in that opportunity. Why is the Garrett Blunt so freaking good in this game? Moving on. Next up out of the single back wing, we have the X-Fade. This play here, you just want to put Ertz on a slant, uh, put your running back to block. That doesn't do anything. And then you can motion in Jeffrey and put him on a streak. So Jeffrey's your cover three option. Um, you can also put him on a in route and then smart route him, so he's kind of turning back to the ball a little bit uh, when you throw it his way. Uh, but it's really up to you. But either way, you're reading high and low with your tight ends, and then Jeffrey's pretty good, even though he didn't catch the ball there. Next up at a single back I form wing, we have the halfback stretch. This play has a lot of great, or this formation has a lot of great run plays. The stretch, uh, basically motion this guy out. Uh, this is a man coverage, this is a man coverage runner just like it is. But you stretch this guy out here and the blocking just holds up better. Uh, there's no pulling linemen, so there's no, so there's no opportunity for a fast defender to shoot any gaps and get in and get you. Uh, so that's also a really, nice, a really nice setup. If it is a man coverage, I would say motion in Jeffrey just to throw your opponent off guard. Next up at the single back I form wing. Uh, you got the PA boot flow. Now, I would say this is a good cover three concept to bring in Jeffrey, but you already have one in Selleck, so it's really up to you. Uh, you can bring him in, or you can just leave him where he's at. If you bring him in, I say put him on a streak so he gets out of the way, But because your tight ends, Ertz and Selleck, are your best plays. I find it's best to motion out Burton. He'll get a little bit of a head start uh, into his route, and he's also one of my bigger my bigger reads. But the real reads are uh, Ertz and, uh, and uh, Selleck down the side. 
Cover three, you definitely want to go Zach Ertz. I'm sorry, uh, Brent Selleck. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cancel the play action here. Looks like a cover three. We're going to hit the circle route. And I don't know, that was actually a single high uh, safety man coverage, but it still works out. So cover three, you want to go Selleck. Ertz and Burton are your cover two concepts. Uh, and your best reads are pretty much going to be them every time. Next up out of the I-form wing, we have the PA Experts Cross. This play here, all I'm really going to do is put Ertz on a drag, and now you have a three-level concept over the middle uh, that also extend to a cover two play. Um, you also have your, your square right here. That's a good cover two beater, as you see. That's just a flood concept all around. Your tight ends, however, are going to be the most consistent. We'll go ahead and run this again. The triangle route is going to be a really good one. That's going to be one of my more favorite ones, I'd say. Typically, the check down. I, I typically like to run the, the catch and run check downs, but that's just me. But uh, you can see how you have you know multiple levels of passing all on one side. Next up out of the pistol Y off, <clears throat> pistol. Next up out of the pistol doubles Y off, we have the strong power. I find it's best to flip this play <clears throat> and then motion over the tight end. Uh, typically, if it's a man or zone, uh, man coverage you're going to be covered either by a linebacker or a new tight end or a safety, and they typically won't follow like they would a receiver. So it, whether it's a man or a zone, this is definitely the best way to go. And you can see how it basically just creates a nice block. Wasn't fast enough to get outside, but it's whatever. It's a good play. If you want to, though, you could always motion over Aguilar. But like I said, if it's a man coverage, you're going to have somebody follow him, and you're going to pull an extra defender into the area, so it's not the best way to do it. Next up out of the pistol doubles Y off, we have the uh, halfback slip screen. This is a really good play for an active user middle linebacker. A lot of times they'll leave the center of the field and you can just pass lead this uh, the square out over the middle. This is something that I actually found people running against me and it's really hard to stop uh, because you can't really take off and go after the uh, the halfback, uh, you know, the halfback like you typically would because it leaves the middle of the field open. So that's a really good play. Next up out of the pistols double Y off, we have the, where are you at here? The four verticals. This is not one of my more favorite plays, but a lot of people like it. If it's a cover three, I typically would put Smith here on an out route and then smart route him. But either way, your cover three beaters are um, your your X route, and then you have a really good check down with it, with the, the running back. So if somebody's running a lot of cover three, this is a good play to run. Except out of the gun wing stack, we have the where you at here the uh, PA jailbreak screen. Yeah, this play here, uh, there's only one option, so you got to wait till your blockers engage. But I find it's best to motion snap uh, Ertz here. So that he's a extra blocker for you on the offensive line because uh, otherwise you could run into some serious trouble uh, before you even get the pass off so if you are going to run this you can see you got two pulling linemen uh, actually three so that would leave the defensive end the defensive tackle open where now the uh, tight end and the running back will take those guys away next up, out of the gun wing stack we have the inside zone this play right here same motion as the screenplay motion over Ertz. we're just going to snap it uh, once he gets across the line, it looks the same and you just basically level out your line so that you have a nice uh, run up the middle there. Inside zone is definitely one of the best inside running plays, but if you run it without motioning the guy over, it's a decent play. Uh, you know, just like that, there's not as much stuff in your way, but uh, it's beneficial both ways. Plus it mirrors other uh, plays, motions that I showed out of this formation. Next up out of the gun doubles flex week, we have the flanker corner. Um, not a lot that you really have to do here. I would say you can put your tight end on a slant or you can put him on a drag or you can just leave him the pass block. Um, that's a pretty good option. Smith here, you can put him on an in route or you can put him in smart route him as a good check down. Uh, but this play is really all about your three options on the one side anyway. As you can see here, um, this uh, square route gets open late. So that's really just a cover two beater outside with Blunt and Aguilar. Next up out of the gun stack Y off week, we have the bench switch this play here not a lot of adjustments uh, Ertz is a really good route Aguilar a lot of times is open right away and Smith is a good um, cover three concept if you throw it to him right away which is, looks like this is going to be so we're going to wait till he gets inside there and it's a real instant open play if you're going to throw the triangle route you got to pretty much do that right away you got to pre-diagnose as you can see it's a really instant open route just like the uh, square route but if you don't think those are the reads you have some really good levels systems with uh, these other routes here, uh, with the with the X route and the the check and release, which is the R1 button, a lot of really good routes here, all coming open at different timing. Next up, out of the gun stack Y off week, we have the the O1 trap. Yeah, nothing to change here. Just wanted to highlight this run play. Um, it's a really good up the middle run. Uh, I'm actually running a three wide versus a three four right now, or four three rather, I would say. But either way, this is a really good play. As you can see, uh, there's just big holes up the middle. 
Next up at the gun stack Y off weak, we have the counter Y. This play here, you typically want a faster back than blunt because you're going to lose acceleration, but you basically just want to motion hike Ertz here, and you're going to see how everybody kind of gets caught up on the blocks by the time you get free. It's a really good timing play. Um, like I said, you typically want somebody a little bit faster just because you got to burst through this hole once you get it. Next up out of the gun Y trips offset weak, we have the PA read. Yeah, you can run it just like this. It's not a horrible play uh, by any means because your you're over-the-middle routes are very good. The play action works well. Uh, but I typically like to put Blunt into a wheel route and motion him to the other side. Now he's going to come open uh, underneath a lot of the zones that are pulling back uh, for a nice, easy catch and run. And the, zone play, the, the, uh, the receiving routes are still really good too. Um, in, in front of everybody. Uh, you could also put R1 here on a drag and he plays off of Ertz pretty good in a high low scenario. Um, a really easy check down. So uh, some good deep routes, but also some really good underneath stuff. And then your uh, Smith out there is a really good cover two beater. Looks like we're gonna have a blitz on the left side here. Smith is a really good cover two beater. All your routes should really get open. I mean, on a blitz like this, your cover three beater is definitely Aguilar. Next up out of the gun Y off trips weak, we have the PA slide. Yeah, this play here, I like to put Blunt into a uh, wheel route, motion him over. Um, he's really good in the flats. If it's a uh, if it's a man coverage, he's gonna get open uh, deep. If you just have to wait a little bit for him to turn up. Um, but it's also really good to run it just like this. This is a good play action play. Um, you got your R1 route here uh, and your uh, circle route are really good deep plays. Um, so a good play all around. If you get a man look, and you have a speedier back than what Blunt is, a lot of times he'll turn up the field and uh, you can just lob it and have him outrun the defender. He actually did, which I'm surprised because I really didn't think he was fast enough. So there's a really good uh, play right there. Next up out of the gun, why off trips weak, we have the slot to buck. A couple different ways you can do this. I like to put Ertz on a drag. That's the one that doesn't change. The, the one that can change is Smith. You can put him on a slant or an in route. Like I said, I've seen Eric Problem Wright do this play with the in route. That's where I got that from, but I typically did it with the slant. Uh, Blunt's a really good, unique check and release play too. Um, as I really didn't, uh, you know, I could have really went anywhere there. I mean, the check and release is the one I was looking at, but you see how the circle came open late. I could have ran it for a touchdown. But uh, that's not really the point. But you're, like I said, you're going to run this a couple different ways. I like this circle route on a slant. The R1 route's really good, too. As you can see, we've got a cover three here. He's going to get open deep. Didn't hang on to it, though. I don't know what happened. But pretty much everybody gets open here. And like I said, this check and release uh, is definitely a really unique play um, that I can't say that I've seen too much um, in any other formations. You want a faster guy, though. Blunt is not a receiving back, as you can see. Next up, out of the gun, why off trips week? We've got the high-low dig. Play right here, all you really got to do is put Aguilar on a slant. Uh, if you want to, you can motion out Blunt, uh, and you got a really good corner strike concept. What this is going to do, really, if it's a cover three, the X route's really the way to go. Even here, which I'm not even sure, it looked like a shift to do a cover three. It might have been like a cover six, uh, but still a really good play. But that, basically what you want is that coverage to pull back, and then Aguilar is typically going to be the look. As you can see, uh, it just pulls everything away from the middle of the field, and he comes open late. And then, like I said, you got your corner strike concept with Blunt. Leaving Blunt in the backfield is fine. I motion him out sometimes uh, because a lot of times you can get that quick open uh, look right there as he didn't catch it. Once again, not a good running back for a receiver back, but you're going to see he could have had a lot there if he would have caught and ran with that. Next up out of the gun trio offset, we have the PA post shot. Yeah, this play right here, I typically put Ertz on a slant. You can also put him on a drag. It's really up to you. But he'll come open underneath all the pulling coverages. Um, a lot of times the defensive backs are getting kind of chippy off the line, so they'll be preoccupied by the time Ertz gets across. If it's a man like this looks like it might be, uh, Aguilar is the way to go on pretty much anything. Uh, just pass lead him outside, float it up. Um, didn't really get the uh, feet in bounds. Actually should have bulleted it. But typically, if it's a single high man, especially uh, man coverage, dragging guards is probably a safer way to go. But if it's um, a zone coverage, you're basically just going from circle to uh, to triangle and you're just going from front to back, basically, deep. But if your tight end's open, take it. Uh, this looks like another man coverage, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to float this up this time. Hopefully, I can get inbounds, catch and run, bad pass. He would have caught and ran that for an instant, for an easy score, though. So make sure if you got a man coverage, uh, Aguilar is your look. Um, I'll just run it again uh, as we got uh, another man coverage. I'll try to bullet pass it a little bit more um, as you can get a really big play here uh, against most man coverages. 
Except out of the gun trio offset, we have the inside zone. Nothing to change here. Just a really good play once again. Uh, just wanted to highlight it. This is something you should definitely have in your arsenal. It's going to be in the preset audibles. So if you ever come out and you see a favorable run defense, like here you got some serious gaps, just switch over to this. And it's a really hard to stop play no matter who your running back is. Next up, out of the gun trio offset, we got the level sales. If you have a good receiving back, it's good to run this play just like this. Uh, you can see how everything pulls back and the running back gets open for a nice catch and run flats. If he was faster, that would have been better. If it's a cover three, like this looks like it might be, Aguilar on a streak is a really good play. I'm not sure if that was a cover three or a man, but either way, he beat it. I would say the best way to do it is putting Aguilar on a streak every time just to be safe and then motioning over Smith. Uh, once he gets to the other side, putting him on a streak is a good option um, so that he can basically stretch the field for Blunt and Ertz. This looks like it might be another cover three. I'm not sure. We're going to go Ertz's route, though. He's not quite beating that coverage, but typically he will. You can also motion him out against a lot of coverages once he's out uh, by himself. If you throw it right when he goes into his break, a lot of times uh, that's just like a coverage glitch that most defenders have a hard time with, whether it's a cover three zone or a cover uh, for a man coverage. If it's a cover two, it doesn't doesn't work, but that's a good play. Next up out of the gun tree offset, we got the verticals. This play right here, you can put uh, Zach Ertz on a slant, motion your running back over, and now you got a real good flood concept in the middle. If it's a cover three, Jeffrey's going to be really good. Uh, but other than that, you just have a lot of really uh, hard to stop options uh, kind of coming open at different times over the middle. And it's a, it's a user's nightmare, really. It's one of my favorite plays. Uh, you could also put uh, Ertz into a slant, move Blunt out. And he'll destroy a man. Like, this looks like a man coverage or like a cover three, whatever. He's going to get open right when he makes that break. He's not a good receiving back, though. So I'll have to take my word for it. Uh, but uh, that's something that I use from time to time. If I see a correct coverage, uh, I'll motion him out. But realistically, like, here, there's a guy right in his way. That's not going to work. If you motion him out and there's nobody on that in cut, then he's going to get open. Otherwise, your reads are really running back tight end and Aguilar. Uh, one of those three will be open every time. Whoever the user chooses is a mistake. You just have to make them pay for it. So there they took the tight end. I go to Aguilar deep. Next up out of the gun bunch, we have the PA post. You run this play just like this. A lot of pros like to motion out Smith so that um, he comes open at the right time under Aguilar. Aguilar is uh, a really good route. Doesn't really beat man too good. Uh, but you can see here the uh, circle route does. It's make a nice possession catch. Kind of late though. If you want to motion out the circle route, it's up to you. Or you can motion out the running back and put him into a flat route to kind of pull coverage and create a corner strike concept on the other side um, is a good way to go. Where basically um, they have to choose high or low. That there, waited a little too long to throw. But you can see that he was open. So it's really up to you. You can do both. Uh, but if you want to, you could always put Blunt into an out route or something like this just to try to pull coverage. I don't feel like it's dramatic enough. For you to see the uh, effect of it um, there you can see it was he kind of chose pretty pretty quick um, but uh, that's really up to you so I guess you know this is a decent option if it's like a flat if it's a hard flat they might take the bait um, as you can see there um, you get that nice catch and run outside so that's probably the best way to run it there so you have a little bit of everything next up out of the single back gun bunch we got the verticals this play right here, you run it just like it is. Uh, Blunt's route doesn't run quite as good um, as some of the, uh, you know, the more dramatic turning ones. But you can see how he comes open underneath everything regardless. If it's a cover three, you can typically bullet pass it, lead it outside to the circle route. He'll be open immediately for a good play. Um, you could also motion out Blunt and put him on a slant. Um, and he'll come across the middle, be open underneath Aguilar a lot of times, or Aguilar will be open and deep. Uh, the R1 route's not a bad one. I'll actually float this out, see if you can get it, get a nice big play there. So a lot of good options. Did catch it, but a lot of good options there. Pretty much everybody's open. Next up, out of the gun bunch, we got the double cross. This here, you just put Ertz on a streak against a cover three. It's going to be a really good option. You can motion in Jeffrey, and he'll be a good option against cover three too. But they're basically going to pull coverage back for Aguilar and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to hit Ertz. That was a cover through the whole way. But they're going to pull down, pull coverage back. Um, or it'll work the other way around where the drag and stuff will pull coverage uh, back. Here's another cover three or cover one man. I'm not really sure. Um, but you're going to have a lot of different options here. Um, as you can see here, the circle route's open deep. I'll pass lead it up. So you got your high and low over the middle. And then you got uh, your cover three beaters 
uh, which are Jeffrey and Ertz. Next up, I have the gun bunch. You got the Z Spot Go. No real adjustments here. Aguilar gets open against just about everything. I don't know what it is about that particular route, but look at that. It's cover three is open. Cover two is going to be open. That thing is just dirty. Man will be open. Um, so that's your main play, your main read. I don't know why that's so good this year. Uh, as you can see, he's open again. I want to pretty much hit him every time. But you got a high-low outside on both sides. So whether you like that or you like the corner strike, I actually don't think you have to motion out the running back on this play like I might in other plays. Still not a great receiving back for Blunt. Uh, but you got all that. And then you also have that circle route, which is really unique this year. I'm not a huge fan of that circle route. Uh, but you can see here there is plays to be made. Um, it just takes a little while to get open, but it's definitely a good check down. Next up out of the gun bunch, we have the halfback base. It's just the best running play out of this. No real adjustments, no real things to change. Uh, but you can see how I had a hole there. Not the fastest running back, but he definitely hit that hole good enough to get a couple of, you know, close to 10 yards. So uh, good run play. Nothing too crazy. No adjustments. Next up out of the gun bunch, we have the corner strike, wherever that's at. Right there. This play right here, you can leave it just like it is where you can motion him out. Uh, you just have a high low read and then smith once again is another you know just like the z spot and go i don't know what it is if you pass him outside he typically gets open on every play didn't catch it there didn't hang on uh but just some really good high low concepts and then aguilar is a pretty decent route right up the middle here as you can see uh so just you know old-fashioned concept corner strike if you don't know about it there you go next up out of the gun tight slots we got the mesh This play can run it just like this. It's not too bad. I, I don't find it as effective as it was in years past. No, Jeffrey, Jeffrey's a really good cover three beater right at the steam there. But I actually think he's best motion him over, put him on a flat route. And now you have uh, a really good cover two concept on the outside. This looks like a man coverage too. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to loft it uh, to Smith here to get him open. I could have ran it the whole way, but it's whatever. So like I said, cover three, leave it like it is. Cover two, motion Jeffrey over. Put him on a flat, and now you get a really good cover two beater on the outside. Plus, you got some really good drag concepts, especially for man. Um, as you can see there, I just passed lead up to Jeffrey there. Didn't catch it. These guys aren't catching balls, but it's whatever. So, good play. Next up out of the gun tight slots, we got the drive trail. This player here can run just like this. is a good cover two play. If you motion Jeffrey out and get him more of a one-on-one -on -one against cover threes, and man, you can just throw it right when he goes into his break and he's going to get open. Uh, there was a bad throw, but you saw he was open. Horrible throw, though. Uh, Wentz does. Wentz be doing that, man. I don't know. They need to upgrade him. I mean, he's like MVP of the league this year. Uh, they're still giving him horrible passing stats. Uh, but you can see there, against that type of coverage, cover two, you're going to have to take the check down, which is Smith. If you're running just like this. If it's a cover three, put uh, Aguilar on a streak. Uh, this does not look like a cover three, but I'll go ahead and I'll do it anyway. That was a cover two. It still worked out. But you can see when he's tight like that, he has that advantage. So cover two or three is pretty good. Here's a definite cover three, so you definitely would want to do it here. But uh, the route that he's running uh, to start is not bad at all. It's a pretty good uh, setup as well. Next up out of the gun tight slots, we have the halfback quick base. Just the best running play out of this formation. Uh, your guard will come across as a, uh, a good fullback, a good lead blocker. You can see how we just got a really nice big play. Definitely the best run play here. Next up out of the gun tight slots, we got the PA clown shot. Yeah, this play here, all you really want to do is motion over Smith again. I'm doing that quite a bit. Uh, put Aguilar on a slant or a drag. It's really up to you. This is a man coverage. Um, in a man coverage, I say leave Jeffrey what he is. If it's a zone coverage, I would say put Jeffrey on a streak, but it's not. So uh, you can do this. You can also put Ertz on a drag coming across. It's really up to you. Um, but this is this is a really good play against man, this circle route. If you would have caught and ran, that would have been better. Yeah, so this uh, we'll run this one more time. Uh, Ertz, you can leave him in that check and release, or you can just put him on a, on a pass block. It's up to you. But I'm going to cancel the play action pre-play. I'm just going to put Blunt on a run block. This looks like the cover three that I want. So we're going to put Jeffrey on that streak. Um, he's going to be open right at that cover three. Yeah, there we go. Let inside. Didn't catch it anyway, but whatever. Nobody seems to catch the ball. Next up out of the gun tight slots, we have the bench swap. Yeah, I got a couple different options here. You can motion out Smith. This is that same concept I've used several times, uh, where if as long as it's not a cover two, he's going to basically beat that guy outside if you throw it on the break at the right time. Uh, Ertz here, you can put him on a slant. Uh, you have your high-low concept with Blunt. Another thing you can do is you can motion over Jeffrey entirely, and now you have 
Um, you know, they're crossing each other. Jeffrey from this position is a really good cover two or a cover three beater. Uh, I probably like this setup the most. And then you got Blunt out of the backfield. He's just going to be uncovered most times. Yeah, if it's a cover three, also you can put Ertz on a streak. Uh, motioning Smith out is probably only good in a cover three or a, a, a man uh, coverage capacity. Uh, but by the way, you could also put Aguilar on a streak. They're both in the cover three, three seam. So here we're actually, I don't know what that was. Might have been a cover two. He gets lit, lit up by Landon Collins. But you can see he had a, had a spot there. So we'll go ahead and move on. Next up out of the gun tray open offset, we got the flanker dig. This play here, all I want to do is put R1 on a slant. He's going to come open behind Ertz underneath most times. And then Blunt is a really good check down. He was what makes this play uh, really special there. Uh, as you can see, Aguilar, um, you know, that linebacker has to choose it between the running back and Aguilar. You just take the other one. Cover three, Ertz is going to be really good. Uh, but it's all really about this triangle route, as you see there. I had to throw it quick because of the pressure, but he still got out. It's just this really nasty acceleration boost he gets. You can motion Blunt out, too, but I don't find it's really the best way to go. And then you also have uh, the square route, uh, which, you know, is a really good play. So I, I drop it in there. Next up, you got the PA read out of the gun tray open offset. Another play, I like to put the Blunt in a wheel route and motion him over. If you have a fast running back, a lot of times he'll turn up uh, against a man coverage. If you don't, however, uh, you can see how, you know, Smith is really good against cover two if you pass lead him up. Um, all your receiving options, you're just going from front to back between Ertz, Aguilar, and then you're ending with uh, with Smith. But like I said, you mean your triangle route is really good too. There, that was just an all-out blitz, um, which is going to be, you know, Blunt just breaking down, <laughs> breaking angles the whole way. But uh, that's your read. He's going to be open behind all the pulling zones. Next up out of the gun empty base, we got the jet sweep. Just want your fastest running back where Blunt is, and I forgot to put in a speed back. But either way, um, it's a really good uh, run play. As you can see, the first play, if that block would have held up, he would have been gone. But uh, just make sure you got some speed um, in this spot. So if you're coming out a lot of five wide receiver sets, this will catch your opponent off guard. Another good run play out of this is the uh, quarterback draw, just as long as you have a mobile quarterback. Um, this here, I mean, you know, this is a five wide set, so people aren't going to be expecting to take off with the QB. But if you do this at the right time, if somebody's spreading their formation, coming out in uh, formations that don't have a lot of linemen, um, I'm not doing a good job. There's a hole there. Uh, but you can definitely catch your opponent off guard uh, with something like this uh, when they're obviously going to be expecting pass. But you really want somebody like a Cam Newton or a really mobile, strong quarterback running that. Next up out of the gun empty base, we have the Y post. Yeah, this play right here, you don't really have to make a lot of adjustments. Uh, I really, this read is all about Ertz. Otherwise, you have your R1 route coming open underneath it. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to catch and run, but um, it's really a high-low. If you want to, you can put him on a slant, uh, but it's not really as effective. I find the spacing isn't really there. Um, but uh, that's it's really just a one-read play. You have a good, a good play over the top with Ertz and a good play underneath as they're playing off each other pretty good. Next up out of the gun, empty base flex, we have the mid, middle high low. Yeah, this here, you just want to put Ertz on a drag and circle on a slant, and that's pretty much your read setup. If coverage gets pulled back on the triangle, fuck you. <coughs> yeah, you just want to put Ertz on a drag and then circle on a slant, and that's really your look. Or you can put circle on an in route. Um, I find it's best to put him on an in route and then smart route him uh, to create a little bit better spacing. Uh, but you're really trying to get the R1 route open. There, you almost overthrew him, but I'll take that. Uh, but you can put Circle on a regular in route. It really doesn't matter. Um, Ertz, you can also put him on a slant to clear a little bit quicker. I mean, it's really up to you. There's a couple different ways to do it, but they're basically just trying to pull coverage for the R1 route anyway. All right, that's the book. Uh, if you have any questions, text me or send me an email. All the information is on my personal site, uh, or you can get it through YouTube. There's a contact information on my homepage. Other than that, thank you for your purchase, and uh, let me know if you have any issues.